This is the weekly Bible lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. The subject of the lesson, Probation After Death. The golden text is from Psalms. O Lord, Thou art my God, my times are in Thy hand. The responsive reading is from Proverbs, Revelation, and Psalms. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. The Bible, Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Matthew. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, His disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Luke, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If, therefore, ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, 
Who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. John. Then said Jesus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death 
unto life. Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. I shall read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Life is real, and death is the illusion. Jesus demonstrated this, healing the dying and raising the dead. When man gives up his belief in death, he will advance more rapidly towards God, life, and love. Thousands of instances could be cited of health restored by changing the patient's thoughts regarding death. The author has healed hopeless organic disease and raised the dying to life and health through the understanding of God as the only life. It is a sin to believe that ought can overpower omnipotent and eternal life. And this life must be brought to light by the understanding that there is no death, as well as by other graces of spirit. We must begin, however, with the more simple demonstrations of control. And the sooner we begin, the better. When the destination is desirable, expectation speeds our progress. The struggle for truth makes one strong instead of weak, resting instead of wearying one. If the belief in death were obliterated, and the understanding obtained that there is no death, this would be a tree of life, known by its fruits. Man should renew his energies and endeavors and see the folly of hypocrisy, while also learning the necessity of working out his own salvation. When it is learned that disease cannot destroy life and that mortals are not saved from sin or sickness by death, this understanding will quicken into newness of life. It will master either a desire to die or a dread of the grave and thus destroy the great fear 
that besets mortal existence. The relinquishment of all faith in death and also of the fear of its sting would raise the standard of health and morals far beyond its present elevation and would enable us to hold the banner of Christianity aloft with unflinching faith in God, in life eternal. Sin brought death, and death will disappear with the disappearance of sin. Science must go over the whole ground and dig up every seed of error's sowing. We are prone to believe either in more than one supreme ruler or in some power less than God. We imagine that mind can be imprisoned in a sensuous body. When the material body has gone to ruin, when evil has overtaxed the belief of life in matter and destroyed it, then mortals believe that the deathless principle or soul escapes from matter and lives on. But this is not true. Death is not a stepping stone to life, immortality, and bliss. The so-called sinner is a suicide. Sin kills the sinner and will continue to kill him so long as he sins. The foam and fury of illegitimate living and of fearful and doleful dying should disappear on the shore of time. Then the waves of sin, sorrow, and death beat in vain. God Divine good does not kill a man in order to give him eternal life, for God alone is man's life. God is at once the center and circumference of being. It is evil that dies. Good dies not. If the change called death destroyed the belief in sin, sickness, and death, happiness would be won at the moment of dissolution and be forever permanent. But this is not so. Perfection is gained only by perfection. They who are unrighteous shall be unrighteous still until in divine science, Christ, truth, removes all ignorance and sin. The suppositions that sin is pardoned while unforsaken, that happiness can be genuine in the midst of sin, that the so-called death of the body frees from sin, and that God's pardon is aught but the destruction of sin, these are grave mistakes. Mortals need not fancy that belief in the experience of death will awaken them to glorified being. Universal salvation rests on progression and probation and is unattainable without them. Heaven is not a locality, but a divine state of mind in which all the manifestations of mind are harmonious and immortal, because sin is not there, and man is found having no righteousness of his own, but in possession of the mind of the Lord, as the scripture says. In the place where the tree falleth, 
there it shall be. So we read in Ecclesiastes. This text has been transformed into the popular proverb, as the tree falls, so it must lie. As man falleth asleep, so shall he awake. As death findeth mortal man, so shall he be after death, until probation and growth shall effect the needed change. Mind never becomes dust. No resurrection from the grave awaits mind or life, for the grave has no power over either. No final judgment awaits mortals, for the judgment day of wisdom comes hourly and continually. Even the judgment by which mortal man is divested of all material error. Suffering, sinning, dying beliefs are unreal. When divine science is universally understood, they will have no power over man, for man is immortal and lives by divine authority. The sinless joy, the perfect harmony and immortality of life, possessing unlimited divine beauty and goodness without a single bodily pleasure or pain, constitutes the only veritable, indestructible man, whose being is spiritual. This state of existence is scientific and intact, a perfection discernible only by those who have the final understanding of Christ in divine science. Death can never hasten this state of existence, for death must be overcome, not submitted to before immortality appears. Correct material belief by spiritual understanding and spirit will form you anew. You will never fear again except to offend God. And you will never believe that heart or any portion of the body can destroy you. Thought will waken from its own material declaration, I am dead, to catch this trumpet word of truth. There is no death, no inaction, diseased action, overaction, nor reaction. I will now read the three daily duties as given by Mary Baker Eddy in the Church Manual. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this church to pray each day, Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A rule for motives and acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church in science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, 
from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to duty. It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged and justified or condemned. This Bible lesson was prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.